Blessings, blessings. This is Dr. K in the house. And I pray y'all can hear me today because the word that went forth on yesterday, I was like, what, 35 minutes, almost 36 minutes into it and then just cut. I know that was Satan. That's why I was like, get thee behind me and up under my feet. But I just come here today and I'm and I'm coming per our father, per Yahweh, per per God, per our Abba, our father. And so these are just questions that you know, he is posing not just to you guys as I release it, but to me, because we're all one body. And so, you know, as I was getting up this morning, the Lord will never allow me to just get up and hit my feet to the ground and don't pray. So I went into, you know, a deep prayer. And then after that, I was released and I was able to, you know, get up and, and and put my feet on this ground because you think as we pray. So the first thing you, you need to do when you get up in the morning is you need to pray. Okay. You, you, you need to, uh, command the atmosphere, command your day, but also in that seeking the father, thanking him, letting him know that he is the head of your life. And then even in that prayer, getting direction from him as to what he needs you to do in this day. That's very important things for us to do. And also, like as an apostle, um, having that governmental and that apostolic authority, I have to speak over the territory that he has me in. So there are so many key components as men and women of God that we must do. So as I finished praying and I'm didn't want to get up. Okay. And what I mean by that is my son, one of his friends, it was his, uh, it's his birthday today. And so I had to get up and, you know, throw on some clothes. That's why I got on one of my hoodies. I carried the DNA of Yahweh, purchase it, kingdomplugconsulting.com. But as I, as I start getting ready, our, our precious father posed this question. He said, we know what Matthew 6.33 says. That's one of my favorite scriptures. The, the hoodie I had on yesterday said live in kingdom with Matthew 6.33. We have to pose, even as we're reading the word of God, we have to pose it, pose it in question form. Am I really seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness so all can be added? So he was like, so many of my sons and daughters are asking for these things, okay? And... Many of us have been in a season of having things at the altar that um, have been delayed, okay? And we have to see whose delay it is. Is it really the enemy's delay or is it our father's delay? Because there's still things that he is, you know, pruning out of us, uh, transforming us, uh, you know, um, processing us as well as our kingdom husband or for my brothers, your kingdom wife. And so a lot of times because we have gotten certain prophecy, okay. Um, and I'm oppose it like this in time out of time. Okay. So in season out of season, some of us hold tight to it, to the point of we're looking forward right then and there. But many of us should know in this season that though many of us have may have gotten a word 10 years ago, some of that stuff is still start is still it's it's manifesting now. Five years ago, you know, um, five years ago, a prophecy or we pray for something is manifesting now. So that's why it's important to, and I'm gonna keep saying, have a relationship with the father. So then therefore, as you discern and the father, you know, lets you know that it's your season, okay, for something. And then he comes and have somebody confirm it to still make sure that it is right then and there. Because see, our father operates out of our time. His time is not our time. So though, hallelujah, we we may have gotten that, but see, you you may have gotten that you was going to be married five or 10 years ago, but now it's going to manifest. Okay. And so, and, and this is for anything it's, it's in this season It's more than marriage. Pe people have been praying for, you know, having children, um, finances to increase new job, you know, whatever the case, but this is what the father posed to me today. He said, are we ready for what we're asking for? Because see, 
All of what we've been through throughout our years has, has been what? Preparation, right? Okay. So have you been prepared? Okay. So prepared and have you been processed? So, so prepared is, you know, seeking the kingdom and his righteousness. Okay. So being prepared, okay. Is seeking the father in the matters. And then even within, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all shall be added. So as you are going through that preparation process. You're also being tested and tried in the fire. You're being processed. You know, things that that were not of God in you, any malice, any unforgiveness, any anger, any past hurt, trauma, pain, all those things, you know what I'm saying, are being stripped along the process in Matthew 6, 33, okay? And so the father said, this is what we need to do as men and women of God. Ask yourself and even ask the, our father to reveal it to you because this is the thing. If you really truly ask the father, he's going to reveal situations to you and he's going to reveal you to you. Okay. So this is what he told me today. He said, many of my sons and daughters are asking for things, whether it's marriage or increasing this or that and that, but are they really ready for it? Okay. So he said, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Are we in season or in alignment with the timing of God? So when it's time to drop. So Car Carol's and Kronos coming together. Okay. Have we actually been pruned properly? Is there still unforgiveness? Is there still past hurt, pain, or trauma? Is there uh, uh, something in us that is still unhealed? Do we need deliverance in something? Okay. So these are questions we need to ask. You know what I'm saying? Seeking the Father to see. If we're even postured and in the position as ready men and women of God to be able to now all that's going to be added for the carols and chronos time to, to come together for the things to open up. Um, have we passed the test? Because I've said this before. I've seen this in the realms and dimensions of the spirit, because even. Even, you know, myself years ago, I, I, I may have started something, but I didn't finish it through. So have you passed the test? Because see, everything pertaining to your life that you're asking for and where you're called, it's going to get tried and tested in the fire. So have you passed the test? And has that built your character? Has it deepened your relationship with the father? Has it deepened your faith with the father? Has it deepened your trust? Has it deepened the anointing and gifting upon you? Have, you know, it, it, are, are you growing spiritually, maturely in the things? Because see, the father's not going to drop nothing into our lives until we are able to be mature in it and be able to maintain it. So that's even when it comes to money. Have I been a good steward? Have, have I been a good steward? Have I done what God has asked me to do with my money? Have I sold where I was supposed to sow? Have I done these things? And have I done it from a good, cheerful uh, uh, a spirit or heart? Or have I done it because I'm really looking for something in return? See, our Father checks our hearts at all times, okay? So, it's like, have I really passed the test? Have I really been tried in the fire? Uh, the, the, the fire? Am, am I positioned? Am I even doing what Ruth was? Okay, was doing. Okay, she was in the field. Am I actually manning where I'm called? Or am I waiting on this husband or wife? Or I'm waiting on this money and I'm waiting all this to come before I go out there and do what God called me to do. This is the thing. See, 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 if God called you to do it, see, he's not expecting you to wait for something to show up in the natural. Because if that's the case, you're going to be sitting up there waiting 
all my life I had to fight. Yeah, you're going to be sitting up there waiting for a long time, okay? So that's where your faith and your trust come in at by doing what he's unctioning you to do because as you step out, as you walk by faith and not by sight, then the things will start to manifest. So, you know, have we done these things? Okay. So have you passed the test? Have you been tried and tested? And then the pruning of situations and, and people and, and, and things like that. We have to be very discerning as to when it comes to whom we're around and what we're involved in and places we go, because see, hallelujah, see those very so things can even hold up the release. So see, we have to ask these things because see, again, we always want to blame it on Satan. Oh, it's delayed because of Satan. Yes, there, there are delays. Due to, you know, the powers and principalities and wickedness thereof in the second heavenly realm coming up against you. But you got to be able to discern in the season. And if you do not know how to discern, that means right there, you're not ready to step into the things that you've been wanting. You're not ready to step into increasing your ministry. Because see, as your ministry increase, more warfare, more responsibility increase. So if you can't even handle the things pertaining to you, your life, you know, you, you can't handle increase in the ministry. You can't handle, um, in increase in the spiritual realms and dimensions. If you won't even simply let the father process you out in the fire, you definitely won't be able to handle a woman, a, 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 a husband or a wife, because with that comes warfare. See, marriages are not easy. Okay. Kingdom marriages are not easy. Okay. So that's why the father, that's why we're tried and tested in these areas for, for a deeper refinement in them, because anything of God, first of all, is not easy, but once God releases these things, can I tell you that it gets even harder because then everything will try to come up against you. So that's why you got to be able to man the steps. But first seek my kingdom and my righteousness and all shall be added. So that first stage of even coming in and surrendering. Okay. Surrendering and being submissive. Okay. Turn it away from wicked things, getting your healing and deliverance, getting your mind set free because who the son says free and free that, these are basic steps. And then after that, being processed out, being refined in the fire, the testing, um, trials and tribulations, the testing of your faith, the testing of what God has upon your life and the things that he has for you that you've been praying for. Again, those things are going to be tested. They're going to be tested a lot. And so the father said, I need for my sons and daughters to really come to me in this season. Are you really posture and position? Are you really doing what you're supposed to be doing in the ministry? You know, there was an apostle that I knew. Okay. And I love this one. I'm talking about powerful. And she knew who her husband was. Okay. But instead of her taking on her assignment, she said, well, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna wait on my husband so we can do it together. And I, and I was like, no, you are supposed to go on and, and do the assignment. If God has called you to it, you got to do it. You got to be the roof in the field. And when we do not do what the father is unction us to do, because we are trying to wait on this money to come through and we are trying to wait on this and we're trying to do that again, you're stagnating your own life. It's not Satan. You're stagnating your own life. Okay. So ask yourself these questions, really evaluate you, not other people, because sometimes, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. We have a tendency. And, and I say that because we are one body to blame everything else, but our own selves. Are you in position? To receive what you have been asking God for. That's the question that I'm posing 
to you today as the father posed to me. Because these things ain't easy. I'm, I'm telling y'all right now. I was I was telling somebody the other day. That's why I don't even like to tell people half of what I do because they because they be like, hmm. I'm like, I have my own ministry, I have my own businesses. I work 40 hours a week. I have children. I I'm writing behind the scenes. I have started a journaling class that requires me to be a uh, uh, position every Wednesday. And I'm barely getting home in enough time from work because of the traffic, but I'm doing it. Besides, I have to maintain my own relationship in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I can't get off track. I got to maintain my own relationship in God or nothing's going to flow along with everything else trying to take care of me spiritually and me in the natural that's why i told y'all hallelujah i you know i, I put myself on, on my own weight loss and lost over 20 pounds because the type of job that i do 40 hours a week is sanitary so the, the jobs that i used to do prior to i man i used to be you know all around the hospitals and the you know in the in the, in the primary care clinics you know going 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 so my weight stayed down okay and then on top of that I'm involved in in um things here. Matter of fact, I have to speak at um the Zetas. Um, uh, they're, they're having like a gala. That's that's what I I don't I, I don't I can't remember the the name of it. But I'm speaking there amongst all the sororities next Saturday. Okay, so doing speaking engagements, doing ministry stuff still. Doing doing all of these things. And 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 I got a, a health and wellness expo coming up November 9th and then the next week, hallelujah. All of us women are getting on to pray. I'm doing a lot of things, okay? But even in that it does not stop me from making sure that I am positioned right in God, okay? Because I, I'm going to tell y'all, I don't know about you, okay? But I know about me over here, okay? And I know where I have been fought at because the enemy was in. I know where I have been fought at because I was simply the lame. And that's why the father had to move people in situations out of my way. So I could just focus on the, the, the assignment at hand. I put that on there the other day because he told me that years ago, focus on the assignment at hand. And so are you positioned? Are you really ready to receive what the father has for you? And don't just be like, yeah, I'm it. Yeah, I'm ready. I know I'm ready. See, if you're quick to say that in that aspect, you ain't really sat back and meditated. You ain't really did a ass seeking knock to God because if he's having me bring this, somebody needs to hear this. Hey, and I'm rhyming again, but I am like so serious. I'm like, you know, not all people in ministry, but ministry to me has gotten so off keevil to where you see so many people on prophesying money, cars and clothes. And don't get me wrong. If I see somebody's going to get a release and the Lord has me to release it, then I'm going to release it. But you see in all that. But are you seeing that that person still needs healing, still needs deliverance because they're suffering from things from their past, hurt, trauma, pain, whatever they've been, whatever they've been through or still dealing with addictions or lust or, you know what I'm saying? Um, gayism, lesbianism. I mean, you know, they're, they, they, they carry malice, hate, unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? They're not really properly positioned right now. They want the things, but they have not uh, uh, processed out. I mean, come on here, fivefold. When are we really going to sit forth and speak the true word of God? Because hallelujah, yeah, we can sit on there all day. And I just said this, we can sit on there all day and continue to prophesy. Somebody about to get something. But if they're not positioned, if they're not healed, delivered, and set free, if they're not seeking God, if they're not uh, passing the test, if they don't know relationship, none of these things, then no. 
No. That's that that's really something. You don't need to speak unless you're speaking it in the form of these things are in store for you from the father. But you know, woman of God or man of God, there's still some things that you must do to get yourself together. Period. Period. Yes, I speak what I hear. I speak a lot of, you know, uplifting. I exhort. I teach apostolically. I prophesy, but all instilling yet, I still have to sit in decency and order. So I'm coming in to you today per the father to pose this because again, we, we already in the new year, according to the Hebrew calendar, but for those who still, because we're in this earthly realm, according to the Gregorian calendar, we got less than three months before we go into 2025. Are you going to continue to stagnate because you're not doing what God is telling you to do? And it's two reasons. If you're still getting fought in certain areas, okay, and I'm going to keep saying it, it's because those are areas that you pray to God for open doors. That's a part of your call, okay, you know, and you're getting fought in these areas, so you're being tried and tested. and or it's three, or you're getting fought in these areas because you're not spiritually mature in these areas. You're still moving in anger. You're still moving in hate. You're still moving in lust. You're still moving in something that is not of God. And so therefore you're going to continue to be fought until you Come from up out of the uh, the demonic covenants of those things. Okay? So if you know you're still out there fornicating and having sex, then, then, then guess what? Don't, don't ask the father for no wife or husband. Get that spirit off of you because you're going to get married and that lust spirit is still going to sit on you. And then you're going to be trying to, trying to ha have your wife and husband and somebody else. Because then it's going to sit on you even heavy. And see what happens is when, when you do that, then the enemy gets in. Then, oh yeah, then he's like, yeah, 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 I'm about to get in. Then he starts feeding your mind delusion and illusion. Yeah, you know, I can go on head over here. You know, I'm married. But, you know, I can go on over here and mess with us. Uh, sister chaos. Okay, for real, for real. And then that's a door opener. And so we got to make sure that we're totally processed out in this thing. And when you're totally processed out in this thing, no, hallelujah. I, I know my father without a shadow of a doubt, hallelujah. He will release the things. He will align carols and chronos together for you. Nothing or no one, no devil in hell, no witch, no warlock, no power, principality and wickedness thereof will be able to stop what God has for you. And so po pose those questions to yourself today to really see. And then I'm going to even put this in there for some of us. The reason why some of us, not all, haven't seen certain doors and so certain areas because that's not the door that God has for us. That's not the person. That's not the ministry tribe. That's not the business. You know, that's not that's not the job. That's not what he wants for you. So you're moving against the will that God has for your life, his purpose and plan. And so if you're finding yourself here often and you have really done a Matthew 633, then go to the father, ask, seek and not. Because have you really asked him, Father, is this the job you want me to have? Is this the husband? Is this the wife? Is this, you know, the form of ministry you want me to do? Do you want me to go open up this church building? Or, you know, we have to ask him because he will reveal. He will reveal the things to let us know. Uh, uh. And then as soon as you say, my God, I have been sitting here. Wanting this door open and that's not what you have for me. And as soon as you shift over to what God has for you, then guess what?
doors going to open. Doors going to open immediately. And I prophesy that today. That as we are but first seeking his kingdom and righteousness, all shall be added. So on that note, Dr. K, I'm signing out. I I just was anxious to get on and I pray this whole message gets to y'all today. Hallelujah. Because the Lord has me divinely speaking in this season. And so now I'm about to sit up here and do some work. Um and, and get some things situated, but I love y'all and the love of the Lord. This is Dr. K. I'm signing out. Y'all, you know, y'all, y'all, I see I got my head on, my queen hat, you know. Sometimes we just have to represent because as God loves us, we need to love ourselves the same way. Okay. Represent who you are in God because we are kingdom citizens, we are representatives, we are ambassadors, okay. So you got to love yourself. I'm telling you, when you truly love God and when you love yourself, it's going to radiate out. It's going to radiate out. And I'm talking to some women today. You got low self-esteem. If you still sitting in low self-esteem because of what a man had done to you or maybe your family member, maybe your own parents or brothers and sisters or ministry people. I ask that the Father heal you today and deliver you out of that because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The Father blew his ruach in you. He stirred the pot pertaining to you and you're beautiful in his eyes and you're beautiful. You got to know that you're beautiful as well. You got to see yourself spiritually and that you got to see yourself. And as you do that, that's going to radiate out. Even though I'm up here and I sure need my hair locked, hallelujah. But my beautician just had a baby last month. Bless her beautiful baby. But I'm good up here because I know whose I am and whose I belong to. Hallelujah. And I know I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. That's why even though things come at me like they do, y'all always still see a genuine smile. This is a genuine smile because my Yahweh got me hands down i know he do because i didn't been tried and tested from all the four corners every corner every every crack every crevice every line going this way all up and i didn't been tried and tested with everything i, I, I was telling some people the other day and women i didn't been tried and tested with my health with my family with my marriage i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm married and divorced and then you know being wanting and desiring marriage now you know what i'm saying i've been trying to i've been trying to test with my finances i've been trying to test it with my children i've been trying to test it with people in the ministry jobs you name it i have been tried and tested but still i'm here today to talk about it and testify and testify because i know that my father loves me and I know because of everything that I've had to endure, even from abuse, even from my own doing in the streets, gangified, you know what I'm saying? Linking up with the wrong man that's gangified and they, they out here for real. And here I am, a, a nurse. Everything could have been took, taken away from me in my 20s. Me, you know what I'm saying? Taking on um, the the generational uh, uh, curse, like both of my grandfathers drunk heavy. And tell y'all, when I was a young girl, I could not stand like where all my cousins and everybody else young, they drink. Oh my God. But when I got married and I was in nursing school and everything started to hit me and my father died at 55. You talking about somebody that could drink a man up under the table? I'm talking about fifths. I'm testifying fifths of Hennessy, fifths of Patron. But God, okay? But God. You know what I'm saying? All the abuse that I suffered, but God. 
I'm talking about fighting and having to fight for my life. All my life I had to fight. Can I tell y'all all my life I had to fight? To where really one instance that happened with some abuse when I was in Texas, I shouldn't even be living today. Because when they went back in that apartment, it was blood all over the walls. I didn't even want to go back in the apartment to even look at it because it was triggers. But God, he took, he brought me out of it. And though I had to endure, even with family, I said it the other day, being a black sheep, certain family members jealous, S certain family members looked at me a certain way because yes, I did have a baby at a young age. I did not take on what they thought I should take on, but see, hallelujah, when you a child of God, you're not going to take on what they want you to take on. So now, whereas I was the firstborn on both sides and uncles and everybody loved me, now they barely want to talk to me. They don't have nothing to say to me, but God, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, and I, and I, and I look at these things because even in school, I, I always had to fight. That's why, like, in ministry, they, they started to call me Kendra Fire. You know what I'm saying? But see, they failed to realize when I was in the world, I was called a, a little fire starter because I didn't start nothing with nobody. Because I'm only 5'2", and I used to be real small when I was in school. But, oh, I was nothing you wanted to mess with. Okay? Because I just didn't fight girls. I used to fight boys back in the day too. So I was very rough and tough. It kind of took me to get more, I'm going to say girly. As I started getting older, like my late, my really my late 20s, early 30s. When I was like, oh, this is what a dress feel like to have on. Okay, now let me start putting on just a smidgen of makeup. And still to this day, don't wear a lot of makeup. And I still like lip gloss, y'all. And I'm in my forties. Okay. But, but all to say, just to testify to some woman out there that needed, I didn't been through everything, everything. Cancer has tried to hit me because that's, that was part of my father's line. My father at 55 died of cancer. His father, my grandfather, 57. My, my father's mother. Cancer at 33. Cancer tried to hit me and my younger sister. Because she's, oh, okay. I think she's like 42, something in there like that. Okay. But when they tried to come back with their report, I said, oh, no. I said, I said, no. I said, the devil is a lie. And I was in the world then. But even then, I had prayer warriors. And I knew that I needed to pray. And God see me out of that. He see me out of everything. So I know that is nothing too hard for my Yahweh, for my God above. It may be impossible with man, but things are possible with God. Somebody needed to hear that today. So that's why I stand here and this smile and everything is genuine. That don't mean that I don't have my days that I don't go through things. Okay. But still, ultimately. I love and I love hard and I'm goofy <laughs> and I love to worship. I love to sing and I love to do the things of God and I love to fellowship even out in the community with people because Jesus was amongst them. I do go places. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm just not. In no church building, all can find. I'm just not sitting in my house, all can find. No, I'm not. But the joy of the Lord is my divine strength. I'm going to add that divine, my divine strength. And so on that note, I'm out. Dr. K, again, I'm signing out. I love y'all. I love the Lord. You are blessed and you stay encouraged on this beautiful Saturday. Let me do some work, okay? Be be encouraged, y'all. I'm telling y'all, God is doing something because he wants us in a permanent state to receive because that's what the hour is. That's what the season is. Amen.